So I've zoomed into my onto my paper over here so you can get a clear view of what I'm doing. I'm going to be mixing some of the Cadmium Medium Lemon onto my palette here and I'm also going to get some of the uh, Titan Red and mix that over here just on the side and we're going to start off by doing the Titan Red for the Absolute Center Cup of the Daffodil and I will use the number six to do that. So first thing we're going to do is get this color nice and mixed up, activated in a 30, 70 sort of uh, range. And here we go. We're going to start by painting the center. Excuse me. We're going to do the center to be very frilly. So using the tip of my brush, I'm going to lightly create these little waves and kind of bring them downward in a circular sort of format. In fact, if it kind of helps to do the little waves, like do a wavy circle, and then go in and do that detail, that might be a little easier on you, as opposed to doing individual sections <clears throat> and trying to get that center. So what I'm doing from, from there, after we've done our circle, is just kind of lightly pulling down the color from the little wavy section that we've done, pulling it down inward, allowing some white space to sort of be there if it's needed. <clears throat> all right, so getting that all the way across and around, and then taking my number eight, I'm gonna get a little bit of the lemon, making sure that I don't have too much water on my brush, and I'm just going to pull this downward into the center some more. Okay. <clears throat> now once we've done that, we're going to go right away and get more of the lemon. And we're going to do our outer petals. So for the outer, outer petal, pet excuse me, for the outer petals, I'm going to make sure that I don't have too much water on the number eight. And we're going to lightly, using the tip, pull downward and do the petals in the manner that we do our five petal flowers. Kind of leaving some white space in between, almost treating these as if we're doing um, leaves. And if you touch a little bit off the center and you get some of that nice orange bleeding in, that's okay. Let's get some of that orange in. And I'm just adding more lemon into my composition there. Let's, here's another one. I'm kind of lightly pulling downward. Notice that I'm getting, again, white space in between. As I'm doing these petals, pulling a little bit into the center, leaving those nice white gaps in between. All right, so let's do another one over here. Because remember, this is a very loose style of daffodils and we wanna keep it as minimalistic as possible, but at the same time also make it quite um, <clears throat> obvious that these are daffodils. Now at this point, if you want to just take a little bit of the color, the Titan Red, and just add some strokes into the the new uh, petals that we just added in, and this way what happens is we're getting a uniform feel into our petals while also kind of making it seem like shadows happening. So we've got three, we've got two more to do. And <clears throat> let's do one here. Leaving white space as best as I can. And then finally one more. Adding some more actually lemon before I go ahead and do the last one. Here we go. 
We've done our last one. And I'm just adding some of that Titan Red into the centers here a little bit. Just having it flare out into the petal. Trying to add some visual shadow effects by adding this into the lemon. And now once we've done this, let me just finish doing this. Okay, perfect. So we've, we've got our main daffodil. We can now move on and let's just do a side daffodil just so you guys can see what that looks like before we go back in and just fix the center. Before we do the side daffodil, I've realized that it's just like the perfect amount of dampness so we're just going to go in quickly and just add a little bit more of these curves frills into the center here so we can get a nice gradient effect because what's happened is the lemons kind of seeped out and made the edges a lot lighter so we're going back and making the edges darker so that it really pops out some more and then finally just adding a little bit of like a couple of dabs onto that area just to make sure that the color is intensified before we move on to add uh, to our next daffodil. <clears throat> Excuse me. Perfect. So now our next daffodil, same sort of idea. However, this one is going to be sideways or slightly off to the side. And so instead of the round circle, we're going for a for an oval shape. And so here's that oval. And then just like we did at the top for our first one, we're going back in, getting a little bit more of that Titan Red. And we are just going to extend it into the center, leaving some white space to kind of make, give it some nice direction as well. And I'm not going to add any of the lemon like we did over there. What I will do is possibly just go in and add a couple of dabs just to kind of have some sort of indication of lemon. So slightly different from what we did at the top. And now we're moving in right into the petals. So I'm getting more of that cadmium medium lemon. I have it mixed up here. And now we're just going to go ahead and create these. Oh, actually, before, before we do the petals, we got to do the little cup area for this. So I'm not touching the edge. I'm just going to go and roughly skirt around the edge without touching it and create this cup sort of shape for our daffodil center. <clears throat> And I'm pushing all the color down to the center, at the bottom, I mean. And now that we have that, we're going to start doing our petals. So from the outward, from out going in, just like how you would do a leaf, that's how I'm kind of pulling that in and painting it on. <coughs> I've done one here. I'm going to do one over on this end. Remember the white space in between so you can have that separation. <clears throat> Here's one more. And 
And notice like this one, I'm kind of leaving it open-ended that way. And then finally, for this last one, I'm just taking a little bit of water on my brush to make this one lighter and kind of just off in the background. <clears throat> Perfect. Now that, that I have that, what I will do is just take whatever leftover color I have on my number six, and I'm just adding a couple of strokes in here where it touches the, uh, the petals. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to add a couple of strokes into the petals themselves and kind of give it um, some flow by putting it or moving it in the direction of how the petal has been painted. Perfect, and we're leaving this as is, and we're gonna go and tackle this part, this petal, or this flower right here, before we go on and do some stems. I'm just perfecting the shape a little bit, make it a little bit more cohesive with the rest, in terms of size. Okay, so I did mention we are doing the center here, so that's what we're tackling right now. I got some some Titan Red directly from the color cake. And here's what we're doing. We're emphasizing the centers. So making it darker. And I'm just kind of roughly going around and adding these kind of triangular kind of shapes outlining the center. <clears throat> Outlining and then also kind of adding some added detail to the center by just kind of extending down so it goes on the inside and you can see that it's clearly going in. So I'm also being very kind of like leaving some areas gapy and open and a lot of white space and then a lot of frilly kind of loose detail on the outer edges here. So a little more detail involved there. And just using the tip of my brush I'm kind of just adding a couple of lines, strokes that are just going inside. Okay, same thing I'm going to do here since it's dried up. Notice the really rough kind of detail on the edges here. It's not clean and smooth. It's kind of white spaced with like a couple of dots, not really extending. All right, perfect. So you can see how it like really pops, but we've still got that nice loose effect happening. So one last thing I wanna do is get some of my Ruby and I'm gonna use the number six again. And I just wanna get a little bit of detail in with the Ruby while this is still damp because the ruby adds some nice beautiful kind of highlights to this so just a couple of strokes here and there into this titan red that we've kind of already added in And trust me, it just, we don't want to add the ruby all over the place willy-nilly, but just adding a couple of strokes of this just really makes the whole flower pop, like so much more. And so that's what we're aiming to do here by just giving it a little bit of a nice reddish kind of feel. Perfect. So immediately pop, right? And if you want to highlight or give more of a shadowy effect to your to your outer petals there, what I would suggest is just taking 
taking a miniature brush, something like the something like this right here, the round 2.2 slash O miniature brush and just getting some of that tighten red and just doing some lines in there. I'll do that at the end. But let's move on to doing some of the green. And here we go for the green. I'm mixing my emerald and I'm mixing my umber. Then we're, so I've used the number eight to mix this up. So I'm just gonna use the number eight to create the stems. And so for the stems, I will start with this one. So let's just make this one. So again, this some brush control would be helpful over here if you sort of practice a little bit before, but I'm just gonna lightly slant my brush and kind of paint my stem in and then what I'm going to do is get more of that umber and just highlight or add more of that darker color right at the top so that it looks more like a shadowy effect coming from the top here and then we're going right away and doing the next one this is going to be a short short stem obviously but that's okay Where's my color? Here we go. Now if you want lighter stems and more like white space in them, then you can just do something like that. Perfect, right? Like I love the green with that yellow. And then now for our for our leaves, what I want to do is get that nice dry effect with the leaves as I fan it out. So what I'm going to do is just get some color directly from my color cake. I just realized because it's two, a mixture of two colors, if I just sort of went without mixing it on the palette, it might end up being a different color, but that's okay. Well, let's just try it. So I'm going to give a little bit of a curve here and then pressing down. There we go. So here's one. And I really like that edge over there that we have for it. chose to do that just to get more of that white space in there and then I'll do another one from the outside in this one isn't as dry as that one but that's okay and then let's do one more for our little guy over here but I just feel like maybe it's easier if we just do another stem looking element there Something like that, because I don't want to do another flower, but maybe this could just look like it's coming from the stem here, and it's somehow longer than the flower itself. Fix your composition, guys. I'm just kind of loosely doing this. The main idea was to show you guys the flowers. Okay, so that's our leaves. I won't do any more. Let's fix the outer bit that I was mentioning we can do, just to add a little bit of detail. And so I'm switching over to my miniature brush. And here we go, we got some color here. Um, instead of the orange, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of the English red. I'm gonna introduce a little bit of the English red and I'm going to mix it in here. And using this miniature brush, we're gonna go in and just add, <clears throat> add tiny little details like so. So for instance, if we want to just have a little bit of an indicator that there is a bend at the top here, we're just going to start from the top and just kind of lightly do this. And then I'm just kind of blending it in. It's still a little bit dark, so what I'm doing is taking my number six and I'm going to just smoothen it out with water.
and just like that we have a little bit of a bend or a curve on that petal so you can sort of add details like that in certain areas in your petal petals and flower and it really enhances the whole look but we're still keeping it loose So I'll just add a little tad bit of it over on this one here. That looks like the perfect bend. Maybe a little bit at the top as well. Great. And now, finally, our little stripes. So I don't want this to be very, very potent and dark. So I'm mixing it down to like maybe 80, 20. And then we're just going to add these little lines in the direction or in the shape, in the shape of this, um, the petal. So again, I'm getting just a tad bit of this with a lot of water, and then I'm just grazing, grazing the sheet. Just do that all around. And again, like I mentioned, if you don't want to do this bit, that's totally okay. You can kind of just leave your daffodils on the note of, you know, like with just maybe the folds or maybe even without the folds if you like how to keep it extra loose and free looking. And for the last one, I'm just going to finish this and then we move on super quickly to the bottom half and then we're done. Fabulous, so we've got that one in and now we're just gonna go ahead and do this one here. I'm literally just grazing a little bit more on the edges here. And then finally on this guy. Yeah, this miniature brush by Zen Art Supplies is quite nice. Giving me like the perfect results. It's going to add a little more detail here. And, and that's it. Okay, perfect. So the flowers are done and we don't need to do anything else except one last thing. And that is adding a little bit of green detail into the centers. So I've taken a little bit of my chromium oxide green and I'm just lightly adding these little kind of strokey lines on the inside leaving white space in between or leaving space in between because some of my spaces are yellow and there we go and then I'm just going to add a little bit of green over here in like a in an arc sort of manner shape rather perfect there we go and that is it so that was it guys, this is, or these are my daffodils. I hope you guys enjoyed this, let me know. Because there's so much light, but here you go. You're able to see better this way, yep. Um, quite nice. The white space really does add quite a bit of uh, detail to it. So do the fine lines and the including of the red or the ruby 
uh, makes it really pop. So I think I'm going to do a third one. And I hope you guys try this. Please do tag me on social media, Facebook or Instagram. I love seeing your work and I love seeing how you guys are progressing. And uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button and also consider subscribing because I've got a ton of other videos of the floral nature for you to explore. So thanks guys for watching and we will chat soon. Bye.